working in that um, space between art, culture, society and technology and seeing the kinds of boundaries that they can cross um, and move around in different spaces and sites. I'm very lucky to work on a range of um, creative data projects using digital methods at the University of Melbourne. One of those here in the link to this um, curated Omega site called Data Creativities, which with the Melbourne Data Analytics platform has, has been focused on social and cultural research during COVID and what has happened in the creative industries um, in Melbourne and in Australia, where really those um, harsh lockdowns have impacted on how artists exhibit their work, how artists continue to work in studios, and what a post-studio, post-digital practice might offer. I'm working in the post-digital space, which if we use this um, post-digital marketing kind of language, is a one-to-moment where the human there in the center um, has opportunities and openings in multiple digital environments. Multiple digital feedback loops are enabled from social media sites to um, their production and, and um, consumption of art world and, and, and media. It means that if that's the artist in there, they're actually able to engage in a wider gallery, library and museum sector experience and for their work to live online and to be active and relational in, in the online environment. Most of where I work is in the digital space um, as a secondary art educator lecturer. Um, we are working in a one-to-one -one space as much as possible, even though there's a collective post-digital, which I truly believe in. A lot of the kind of transmission environment through COVID has been very digital. Um, and then we have this other context where I, I see most of our art education in schools in the pre-digital space, the one to many, where art education might be visiting um, through Google Art and Culture, uh, a gallery um, on the other side of the world, and this one person is engaging with the, mu the multitude and multiplicities of the glam sector, but not really getting anything back. You know, it's not a one-to-one -one where I'm actually receiving information back or being alerted to things. I'm in control of the experience, but it's not a relational um, or affective environment such as the post-digital, which, which really is a responsive um, digital environment where the connection and the collaboration and the collective um, is visible. So right at the start of the pandemic in March, this is where I've been since. Here I am today sitting in front of this. Um, I'm in my study, teaching, researching, um, learning, collaborating, working with my colleagues to develop new ways of understanding in art education as well as in the digital humanities. Throughout this pandemic, I wanted to draw on a couple of things before I get to my two particular projects. There were post-digital environment has been an innovative um, change, a paradigm, shift, a paradigm shift for art education in Australia, where the glam sector itself became the relational responsive space, rather than that experience, um, digital experience of getting online and, and walking through a gallery space in Google Art and Culture, and maybe creating my own little gallery collection like I can in, in that space. The hashtag space, which has really, for me, changed the, the culture for art education, has meant that I'm participating. I'm an active participant in the glam sector, where my work is being exhibited in a wider art collective using, these, um, using the feedback loop of the hashtag. Heidi at Home meant that young people uh, in their homes, seven years old, could have their portrait up on the Heidi website. Now, Heidi is the Museum of Modern Art here in Melbourne. It's, it's an important part of Melbourne heritage and culture. And that, that is a significant piece of post-digital work. Uh, we saw the Getty Museum Challenge as a global um, piece of art education. So n not just um, in the classroom, but the broader context of people at home 
dressing up uh, uh, and performing and role playing artworks. That's an art education that I'm really excited about and where those slashes between A, R and T become more important in a speculative artographic way where we're doing art and research and teaching. That's a pedagogical implication for these hashtags. They actually draw us closer as INSEA presented as their hashtag early in the pandemic. Some other work I've been able to do with Dr. Abby McDonald at the University of Tasmania is think about the implications for professional learning as artographers. How can artists, researchers and teachers come together to develop new ways of learning and being and doing post pandemic now that we've moved ourselves from the pre into the digital environment as educators. And the way to do that was to shift the physical space from the studio to the post studio. Here's an example um, Abby and I wrote about in Teacher Magazine, where teachers began getting those um, modalities home. Art at home bags here set up by Michelle Coombs, a New South Wales visual art teacher, to ensure that there was an equity at home. Those art materials could begin to shift in a post-studio space and we could think about medium differently through an understanding of materiality, but we had to start somewhere. We had to enable the establishment or setup of the infrastructure of a studio at home, in the kitchen, the lounge room, the bedroom, the bathroom, as some of my students have even worked or out on balconies. But to move that shift into the, into the post-digital, we needed um, the post-studio environment to come with it. And how did we do that? We needed to send materials home. To do that, Art Education Australia, that I'm a council member for, also established a digital space as a collaborative, a collective space where art educators across the country could share the kinds of digital materials that they were working with from the glam sector. So that instead of people having to do that scouring and curating and sourcing on their own, the collective sourcing came together as a digital um, environment where as collaborators, as professional development, we shared our online learning experiences with each other so that this has become a living bank of digital learning and teaching. INSEA, in, on the global scale, did the same thing. This is in April, a conversation I had with the INSEA executive. I serve as an INSEA world counsellor. Um, and this conversation was about that studio practice. How did I move the physical um, collaborative studio environment that we know is so important to practice how did I move that into an individual space but stay together? How did, how did I create connections digitally? But how did I also create the conditions for rich studio practice to happen at home? Two projects um, that indicate for me really interesting ways of working in the, in the post-digital environment and in the post-studio environment. Being So Curious is the first, a project um, that I work on at Science Gallery Melbourne. And the second will be with my teachers. I want to start with this though, that we always as a project acknowledge and pay respect to traditional owners of the lands upon which our campuses are situated at the University of Melbourne. So for me, being so curious and learning to teach art in lockdown have shown me why radical collaborations and if you go back to early artographic practice and artographic inquiry, these radical collaborations of rupture and loss um, and disruption are really important components of the connections of the artist and researcher and teacher. It's the activism sites for public pedagogies to create space for hope and creativity and speculation. A public pedagogy has shifted for me because an art education has not always been a public pedagogy. Often we've had to experience those public pedagogies when we hit museum sites, when we're in galleries, when we're in public art spaces. But the digital now enabled that. The glam sector itself had shifted to a public digital pedagogy site and enabled art education to move, move all together from a very often Eurocentric modernist version into a post-digital, uh, post-studio contemporary practice, looking at the kinds of art that were being made by artists today. These are the Psycurious co-researchers that I have um, the great pleasure of working with, uh, a team at the University of Melbourne, 
um, on the left there and on my right, my Sycurious co-research team. Young people who are a part of the steering committee uh, at Science Gallery. Science Gallery um, are all around the world. We are about to have ours open next year, an important collision space. The Science Gallery work in the liminal space between art and science. For me, those slashes between art, research and teaching are the same interstitial spaces, the spaces where we need to learn to cite new understandings and new knowings. And this is why doing art education or doing arts-based and creative research at Science Gallery has been so informative to my own creativity and hope and speculation, but also as a co-designer and a co-researcher with the communities I work in. What we did in this project was to use a creative research method and a speculative inquiry of engaging with writing and engaging with making as artographers to develop new ways of knowing what it means to be sci curious. What we did was send zines, traveling zines from one house to the next of each co-researcher in the team about being sci curious. What does it mean to be sci curious? And how do we use other forms of knowing rather than textual to actually draw the affect and emotion and feeling um, and knowing and being so curious? Here they are woven, knitted, stitched and drawn from one house to the next as the provocation from the front cover to the inside cover to the next cover created opportunities for each of the participants in the study to engage in what it means to be so curious. These included text about being so curious. There needed to be rules of engagement and each um, zine, a lo-fi folded paper magazine was sent first with these rules. It's okay to be so curious. So curious means recognizing opportunities to share knowledge and through artistic work, we came to understand things differently. It's because of the pandemic that we were actually able to do this because we were at home. And mailing artworks to each other brought a new understanding of ourselves. It was a radical collaboration. Here's, here's another zine. So Curious is a method, a way of being, a community, a connection point. Boom, between art and science. Here's one that connected the swarm the idea of a group of people together creating new ideas while at home, disconnected, but incredibly connected online in our Microsoft Teams site and through our Zoom research meetings. But together through this mail interaction where something would arrive at my home and I could open it as a gift to explore what it meant to be so curious. So curious is, so curious means that we are, um, interested in the way that we understand the merging or emerging of ideas and together our intergenerational project developed a new way of understanding so curiosity as method and so curiosity as pedagogy it really as a as a speculative method enabled us a great shift in thinking about what the ethics of joy is in research research that as i said is disconnected but connected an assemblage of ideas um, a way to encounter a range of happenings. So this is further explored with my teachers, becoming teachers, secondary art and design teachers, learning to learn online at the same time as learning to teach online because that's how they did their placements. They did their internships online as activist art teachers. Here we are at the beginning of the year. Melbourne had been in terrible um, fire circumstances that the, the sky was filled with smoke and heavy sitting on the ground. We're in our studio here, the multi um, purpose award winning design studio at um, the Melbourne Graduate School of Education after three hours of drawing and experiencing what it means to be artographers in the studio. Here we are with doc, Dr. Dr. Patsy Botkin. Um, from the National College of Art and Design who had visitors, visited us from Ireland during that time in January and February. And then March, we go home. 
But COVID-19 became a hopeful creative space for me because it enabled me to open the broader digital ecosystem for art education that in the physical digital physical studio I wasn't able to do, but in the digital studio I could. Here we are connected in our home studios, in our home study environments, ready to learn at the beginning of this, not realising that we would be home for so long. But what my students were able to do was turn their um, experience into digital, post-digital spaces where they could develop and design new ways of thinking about teaching each other, learning with each other through digital circumstances. Here's a beautiful piece of paper art developed through a YouTube clip that was presented um, in the Zoom class. And then we would leave the Zoom studio and we would head out into our home studios, produce work, photograph them, and then share them back into these large portfolio padlets that kept us connected to each other. Uh, th this is one visual arts and design in a virtual campus from this semester, where work was able to be um, reflected upon re-engaged with, rethought about and shared very differently to even the hanging experience that would have gone on in the walls in the studio. So you saw that picture earlier. Uh, our curriculum includes present and perform and I'm very, um, it's built into every part of the curriculum that I have as an artographer, that we produce work, we reflect upon it, we share it, we discuss it and we feedback loop that work back in. These digital walls enabled me to do that form of radical collaboration in the post-digital, post-studio environment. A piece of work from one of those by Steffi Domovsky, clear, clear Lungs on Country, after a walking methodology that I asked my students to engage with to deeply listen to country on the one hour a day that they were allowed out. And in doing so, they were able to meditatively use walking as methodology, as a part of artography, to think about where they were living and working and the ancestors and elders and owners of the country and how that might re-engage them in a new way of understanding what it means to be an art educator and why art and design matter in schools. Here's a kind of further theoretical Padlet board where each um, student in my art and design class is able to explore the futures of art education and what do their research need to do to engage a futures post-COVID, post-digital, post-studio environment. They, they came up with the most amazing projects that socially engaged practice and community arts practices needed to drive a change. That schools um, moving from the pre-digital to the digital to the post-digital um, needed to rethink what it was that the art world was doing to ensure that kids coming through the ecology into the art world were responsive to the contemporary art space, that, that they could read memes and GIFs as artworks that they could understand the post-internet practice, that they would be able to engage with critical art making in the digital space, and that they would have the visual literacies and languages to do that. To do that, we explored these large, big tanglegrams, um, ways of exploring through text as image and data, and feeding that data back out into the Padlet boards for wider feedback in the collective, publishing your research, um, openly um, talking about our research as artographers and then feeding it back into curriculum designs. And it was all done online. We have, we have radically changed what it means to be an activist teacher and to think about points of activisms to decolonise curriculum, to decolonise pedagogies and to ensure that our art education students are ready um, to read contemporary works and that through the reading of contemporary works, they're, they're engaged and knowledgeable to read historical works, but with new languages, new ways of understanding beyond the art elements and principles of design, ways of experiencing as artist and audience, as the Australian curriculum says, ways of experiencing as spectators and audiences, but underpinning that as practitioners. Practitioner is the key point in all of this work. Um, to understand hope and creativity and speculation is to have a shared collective experience of practice, to move everyone together as practitioners through practice, um, as practice. And, and that within that practice, we're actually able to engage in a shared understanding 
This is a page from one of the zines that my art teachers were sending each other. Our pandemic zines kept us connected, um, just like the Psycurious project, but they also enabled us to create new collegial friendships so that when this cohort graduate, um, who did know each other physically in the, in the beginning of the, of the program, will we'll be able to connect with the textual and visual aspects of the zines that they sent so carefully to each other's homes. Thank you very much. Uh, 